Any bigness is the turtle. The friend of Mitchell. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Y'all doing good today? Yes. Doing well. We're having some issues, but we have computers tonight. Praise the Lord. That's good. Here's another song. Thank you. We apologize. We've had some issues, but we got square away, hopefully. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for he is good, for he is worthy. Okay, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to take the scriptures from Psalms 149. Mm -hmm. 149 reads as, Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Amen. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbre and harp. For the Lord take a pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Yes. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high priest praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Amen. Uh, give an honor to the reading of the word. May the Lord sanctify it and let it be used for that building this kingdom. Praise the Lord for the scripture. We're going in the prayer. We're praying for uh, the sick and the shed in. We're praying for the Harrison family, also the Clark family, for Monique Clark and her mother that passed on this week. We want to. Anyone else name that you might want to call out before Dick and Tony go in the prayer? If you have somebody that's sick or someone that need prayer, call their name out in Jesus' name. Anybody want to call the name out of someone uh, right now? Feel free to call their name out right now before Dick Turner going in prayer. Yes, we want to remember the corporate family whose funeral was yesterday. That's mama's um, uh, people. Amen. I'm going to call out Ayanna Jackson. Johnson, who is in the Hospital. Ask you all to remember uh, the Shoemaker family, uh, um, uh, Faye Shoemaker and her son, uh, Norman Shoemaker Jr., mm. who's fighting for his life. Remember that family in special prayer. Amen. I also want to say a prayer for uh, Christy Brayford. Uh, do you continue to pray for her and her uh, healing? Anybody else? Excellent prayer for Mary brought next, my sister-in-law. She's still in the hospital. Ex each and every one to pray for her. Amen. Anyone else? 
That's going to say to uh, pray much for Sister Miller, who's at home recovering from uh, oral surgery earlier this week. Anyone else? Anyone else? Also, I want y'all thank for the praise report on Robert Upshur. Uh, he had cancer of the uh, prostate over 12 years ago when he went to the doctor. The doctor said he did not have cancer in his body. And we even what we've been praying for. Thank you, Jesus. Prayer call, we call in. Okay, uh, at this time, Deacon Trammell will lead us to the throne of grace. All right, we'll bow our heads. Gracious Father, we come to you, Lord God, just to say thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for how you woke us up this morning and you gave us the brightness of a new day. Lord God, every name that was called out tonight, Lord, you know. We're going to put this on your to-do list, Lord God. We thank you right now because you can do anything but fail. We thank you for the Holy Ghost to sweetly abide in our soul right now. We thank you for our pastor and first lady at all times, Lord. Continue touching their bodies, Lord God. Give them what they need, Lord God. Blessing all the saints, Mother Grace, Lord God. Saints that was called out tonight, the uh, sick and shut in. Yeah. We want you to go into the hospital, or go into the nursing home. Touch that body right now, Lord God. You said we can ask anything in your name that you would do it. We believe it. We count it done. Lord God, we want to say thank you right now. You said in all things, give thanks, Lord God. We know you doing it, Lord God. Man can't take credit for what you're going to do, even this pandemic. We say thank you right now because we know you are in charge. Continue blessing each and every one. Saints all over land and country. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the prayer. Also, I thank uh, God for the praise report that uh, gave us on Lenny Walker, that God has blessed him and sent him home. Praise God for another miracle, another miracle. We praise God that God will continue. Uh, people don't believe in miracles, but I do. I still believe in miracles. I still believe that God works miracles within his people because we know him. He said, anything that you ask in his name, he will do it. And also, I want to thank my wife and the church, Saints of Smyrna, for such a great uh, appreciation services uh, for the pastors. Appreciation service this month. And I just thank God for all the saints and all that you do. And we just praise God. We thank God for my wife that she is special. God has given me an angel. Truly, I have a living angel. And I praise God for her being all that she is for the church and for me and keeping me, uh, helping me, doing things for me. I praise God for it. I also want to remember um, Brother Deshaun. Uh, his mother passed uh, a few days ago, young lady. And Brother Deshaun and his father and also his grandmother, Sister Simmons. Uh, we remember that family in prayer. Uh, um, his father is... Uh, Tatum, I don't know his first name, but his last name is Tatum. Remember him and remember uh, Deshaun's mother, young lady, just in the prime of life, but she went home to be with the Lord. And so many that, that are leaving here, but we are praying for everyone struggling for their life. Laverne Clark that went to be with the Lord. Uh, so we're just praying for the church as a whole, for the body of Christ. And do we know, even in this life, we're going to have trouble, sickness and disease. But we know God, one day we're going to be healed from it all. When we walk the streets of gold, the heavenly home that we're going to one day. One day it's going to be all over saints. And this time my wife is going to come and give us a true selection. And we're going to move forward in Jesus' name. Give our hands, she come. Praise God. Oh, 
to show someone the way and enable me to say this nation. We're praying for those in authority. We're praying for our churches, our leaders, people. We need God like never before in this crucial time that we're living in. Pray for the Supreme Court that they don't be biased, that they be fair in their judgment and not be politically driven because we need people that's gonna stand for righteousness. Highest court in the land. If we get the wrong people on that court, it could be devastating for everybody. So God will place people in position that's gonna be for a godly principles, not just doing things to really set us back another hundred years. The education system, the banking system, everything is going in reverse instead of going forward. If we don't be a leader in a free world, we got to do it in the name of the Lord. In God we trust is on our money. In God we trust. And we want people to go back to believing that we trust in God. We're trusting in God. No one's above God. No Supreme Court, no president, no sin, no Congress. Nobody's above God. We believe it. We're believers. And we believe before the day is done that God's going to put things in order. Because I feel like we are in a chaotic situation. The world's in chaos. Every time I get read the news, some of it's shot. 
mouth of Shuhit. All children have been shot randomly. And not just in one particular part of the country, but it's all over. To be the leader of the world, we got to really watch out. We got to get back to land before God. The church is going to have to be the first one to take the position of standing for righteousness. The church, the pastors got to come together. All denominations, all races, we have got to come together and pray for this world. You can take spaceships and go out in this orbit and go where you want to go, but God is, wherever you go, God is there. Where can we go from the presence of the Lord? Nowhere. So you can spend all your billions going up, but everything go up must come down. God is in control. And we're praying for the righteous. We're praying that God will revenge. God will do what needs to be done. Six, Romans six, Romans six. Romans 6. Holiness and sanctification, the way for believers to be free from sin. Holiness and sanctification is the only way for believers to be free from sin. Dealing with holiness. Then we're going to deal with a Romans 6, but we're going to do an introduction to Romans 6. Introduction to believers who is justified, those whose faith is counted as righteous as Romans 3, 21, 5, and 21. Is let is to let us know, saints, of his righteousness, his right standing. Is righteousness, work holiness in Romans 6 and 19. The believer is to live a holy life. This is what he's saying. Believers, this is just the introduction to Romans 6. Believers is to live a holy life and become a servant of righteousness. We have become believers to live in the Holy Ghost, this new life, and become servants of righteousness. A genuine saved person cannot abuse the mercy of God. Again, a genuine saved person cannot abuse the mercies of God. Because we didn't earn it, it was a gift given to us, his mercy. And whenever we have fallen short, and done wrong, his mercy give us another opportunity. Thank God for his mercy that's renewed every morning. Great is God's mercy. He cannot walk in sin. God cannot walk in sin, saints. He cannot make a habit of sin. We cannot make a habit of sin. We can't walk in sin. God don't walk in sin. But we cannot make he cannot walk in sin, and we cannot make a habit of sinning. So a lot of people today will say, well, God knows my heart, and God knows I'm a human. God knows that I'm a fallen creature. Yeah, God knows all of that. But we're making excuses uh, for not living according to the word of God. And say, these, don't make a habit of sin, he's saying. Two, do so is to tread upon the mercy of God and make a mockery out of God's grace. It is so that God's grace gives a person a, a, the license to sin. So this introduction to Rome, uh, Acts 6, Romans 6 rather, and such is contradictory to the term as much as contradictory to say it, that a dead man is alive. Romans 6.14. Let's go to the book of holiness and sanctification, the way for the believer to be free from sin. And all of us want to be free from sin. 
He says here in verse one, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Two says, God forbid, how shall we as believers, I add that part, how should we that are dead to sin live any longer than it? Three, know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by the baptism into his death, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in the news of life. For we, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we should also, we should also be in, in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead to Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death have no dominion over him. For when he died, he died in sin once. When he lived, he lived in God. So he's saying here, when we die to sin, we die once as our salvation. We receive him, we receive his Holy Spirit, and that, that is the beginning of your holy or your righteous walk in God. And we don't we don't make a habit of sinning. He didn't say we would not sin, but he said, don't make a habit of it. Don't go around making sin your primary objective instead of uh, being dead to it. A man, he said, if a dead man, he cannot live again when he dies. So if you're dead in Christ, you don't live according to sin anymore because you died to sin. Sin became your enemy. The way of a man is to break the habits of sin is for him to know the glory or the glorious position he can have in Christ. One thing is now for the point of this message, saints, the believer is to know the real position in Christ. The believer is to know his real position in Christ. It is revolutionary or re revolutionize his life. It, revolutionized his life. It changes everything about you as a believer. He brings things to you, to your mind. He reveals things. When you are saved, sanctified, and filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, you're dead to the things of sin. Sin should not reign in your moral body anymore. That don't mean sin won't come to your head, to your mind, but you got power to not let it stay there. So we have to break it, the habits of sin. And we got to know our position in Christ because he has revolutionized our life. He made it all new. Now, for this point of the passage, the believer is to know his real position in Christ. Knowledge of his position will keep will help keep him, saying, from sin. Note the word no is used three times in Romans 6, 3, 6, and 9. One, the believer and the question of license in 1 and 2. Two, knowing first by position, the believer's old self was crucified with Christ in verse 6 and 7. So as believers, we should know these things. We should know that the believers and the course of sin. We should know first by position, our position in Christ. The believer is baptized, placed in Christ. We're in Christ. As Christ died, we are dead in Christ. That's our position. No, uh, and third, no second. By position, the believer's old self 
was crucified. Knowing, third, by position again, he spoke about the believers live with Christ now and forever. So we are sold out to the things of this world. We resist temptation. We res resist sins. And we look to the new life that is created within us as believers. The new life that is created in us. We're a new creature in Christ. We're separated from the things of the world. We're in the world, but we're not a part of the world. And, and he deal with, with Roman, uh, Romans 6, 1 and 2. We're going to deal with that. License. Grace versus law. Grace. License. Grace versus law. Sin. The believer. And the question of law or license. Now, there's three points we want to deal with here. A, does the grace of God give a person a free reign to sin? Does the grace of God give a person a free reign to sin? Question. I've seen so many say, well, God knows my heart. Yes, I failed. I asked God for, it, for repentance. Then they do it over again. Well, I, I know I've sinned. I asked God for forgiveness. I'm only human. I'm doing my best. So this habit is continually. But he says, a person, a free reign to sin. So they are trying to use the grace of God and the mercy of God to do as they please. And they still reigning in sin. Can a person just go ahead and do what he, he wants, expecting God? To forgive him, question. Grace means God undeserved, unmerited favor. It means that God freely accept and forgive a person's sin. That he freely justify a person by faith. Now we do a different study, a deeper study of this thing. Two, one, grace seems to give free reign to sin. To put no restraint upon sin. There are often the thought of the common man, even believers, that is the feeling that if we are forgiven by grace and not by law and doing good, then sin does not matter that much. We do have, we do not have to worry too much about the law of God and righteousness. Just so we do a fair amount of good. That's the way people think. As long as I do some good stuff, my good outweigh my bad. My good outweigh my bad. But you got some news coming. We, we can pretty much do what we want, but God is going to forgive us anyway. That's the philosophy. Dead for our sins. All we have to do is ask Him and He will forgive us. That's the thought of. The church of the 21st century. Do what I want to do. I, and it's a free gift of God. And, and I can sin. I can do what I want to do. And I ask God to give me and he'll do it. So grace seems to encourage sin. That's what he's saying here. Paul had just said that grace is stronger than sin. In 5, 15 and 21. God's grace is so strong. It can forgive any sin no matter how terrible. In fact, the, the greatest, the sin, the more uh, magnificent or magnified magnified uh, God's grace becomes. When a great sinner is forgiven, God's grace is much more magnified than a moral, morally good person repents and is forgiven. A state as stated, the greater the sin or sinner, the more God's grace is magnified and glorified. That's the thought of the Romans in this day. How sad a commentary that is in through our society even today. Note that the thought and philosophy, in particular of those stressed to law, carries his argument even further to their position against grace. No doubt Paul was asking this question time and time again 
about legalism. Legalism has come full, a full front in the church. Legalism, we can do what we want to do because God's grace will cover us. He said, <clears throat> the hounded and fought against them and just did not understand the wonderful grace of God. They argued that if forgiveness is by grace, then sin, not a good thing. Should we not continue in sin so that God's grace will have more opportunity to provide his grace and become more magnified to his glory? Paul answered, is the answer of the righteous in the nation? God forbid any way with such thought, far be it that we ever think such a thing, especially as believers. But there's so many believers believe that today. It's amazing how the devil has tricked people's minds to think that you save and you can do anything you want to do and God's grace and God's mercy will cover you. What a fallen state we're in. Say, so God forbid, God forbid anyone to such thought. Far be it that we ever think such a thing, especially as believers. And we have that problem in our society. The believer's position in Christ shows the ultimate importance of true believers continuing sin. The word continue means to practice or to ability yield to sin. Just a habit, a bad, nasty habit. A true believers no longer practice sin and no longer yield to sin. Why do we keep falling into condemnation and into sin if we walk away from sin? Because of the call nature that we have. The call nature that we have it, 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 it's, it's holding on to its past life. It's holding on to things, temptation, all kinds of eye gate, the ears and the mouth. We live and hear, we speak these things that are, that are, are deadly to us as believers. He cannot live without sin, not totally. That's what they said, but no longer live in sin. A true believer is dead to sin. He said, well, I'm him and I can live. I can't live. I got to ask God for help because I can't make it. But if you are saved, he says, but he is no longer living in sin. A true believer is dead to sin, and a dead man cannot do anything. He cannot think, speak, or move. How can we, how can a dead man live any longer in sin? It is utterly impossible. It is totally against the, of nature. For this position, Lee, a true believer have died to self and has become uh, been a place into Christ to live for him. He now possesses the divine nature of God. God's very own nature. Psalms, I mean, 2 Peter 2, 1 and 4. 2 Peter 1 and 4. Saying that God's own personal nature that we have now. He is placed and position in Christ, which means he is dead to self and alive to God. What a word, what a word. we we'll are die to self and live to God. I thank God for salvation on today. Say, like, I don't know about you, but it's not easy living a saved life. I'm not going to say it is. It's going to take your Holy Ghost, the power of God in your life to help you live a dedicated, consecrated, Holy Ghost for your life. Can I get an amen from somebody? It's going to take all of that and some. Note about the fact when a man turns to God, when a man turns to God, he turns away from sin. When a man turns to God, he turns away from sin. Again, when a man turns to God, he turns away from sin. Praise God. Hallelujah. God's grace, hallelujah. And, and he says it, and, and when he turns to God, he turns more and more to sin, he says. God's grace will not bring me into God so that he can be free to sin more. God's 
Grace brings man to God so that he be free from sin and his guilt of sin. God does not give license to sin anymore. Now a dead man is able to move about and sin. So the movement and the things that people do is contrary to God's will. Contrary. Now, Romans 6 and 3 says, Jesus Christ, he died, believed, positioned in Christ. First, the believer has been baptized or placed in Jesus Christ. In our baptism in Jesus' name. That's why we don't baptize in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We baptize in Jesus' name. We typify his death and his burial and his resurrection. We go in a liquid grave. As Christ went in a physical grave, we go in a liquid grave and we rise walking in the newness of life. We died in Christ Jesus. Now he says, first the believer has to be baptized or placed in Jesus Christ. This is the first thing the believer should know about the position in Christ. First, being baptized in his name. This is one of the most uh, glorious truths in all of the scriptures. Ye, uh, then they said, yet so many country uh, verses has struggled over what it means to be baptized, that the glory, glorious meaning has been often been bypassed. The meaning of baptism is discussed in another text. In the, this present text, the glorious truth of these verses are being consecrated upon Christians everywhere agree that being baptized is a picture of his death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When a true believer is immersed, he is proclaimed to the world that he is being identified with Christ. And that's why he said immerse. He didn't say sprinkle. He didn't say spoke, spoke over and you say, confess the name of the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Accept him in, 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 by faith and you're saved. He said immerse as Christ went in the liquid grave, went in the natural grave. He died, he rose on the third day, and he went back to glory. So he's, he's telling you, he's explaining to you, I don't care what your theological thinking is, he said you got to be immersed into water in Jesus' name, in the baptizing in water. So by the way, what happens is no water. You can find water. God will let all ways to come up in the desert. God won't give no excuse. If he said a mercy, he mean a mercy. He's God. And that's his, that's his thing. God will take you. If God said it, he'll bring it to pass. By being placed under the wall, he is pro proclaiming that he has died and have been buried with Christ. By being raised up from the water, he is proclaiming that he has been raised from the dead with Christ live a new life. That's why people struggle. Listen to me, saints of God. That's why people struggle with living holy. They, they want to hold on to the world and use it. I'm human. They don't want to do according to the will of God or the word of God. They're taking the easy way out. A lot of Churches that don't even have a baptismal pool anymore. They went clean away from Acts 6. Way away from it. Don't even believe in immersion anymore. Don't even believe in that. So blinded have the world become because of their theology, their position in their school of learning, but not their position in Christ. It's two positions. It's two thoughts. The thoughts of the world and the thoughts of God. Which one are you going to accept? The thought of humanity? The, the, the humanities? The, the learnings of great theologians, great scholars, 
they always, they argue between themselves, like doctors have different methods of treating a patient. Once they do this, this diagnosis, others oh, this diagnosis, do this, do that, and you're confused. That's where the, 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 the Bible has become, it's become a, a punching bag. You hear it this way, I hear it that way. And what's that way it come out? That's where it's gonna be. It's no reality in that kind of a salvation. Only by the grace of God. God gave us 66 books and no professor, a scholar, theologian, or supposedly a great uh, uh, thought in the Christian can define anything not in the Bible. You can't re rewrite the Bible. It's stand on God's word. It's been through storm, it's been through fire, it's been through flood. It's been through all kinds of stuff, but it stood the test of time. And you will believe some guy or some man above God, something's wrong with you. Now there's three glorious positions or three glorious points. The believers is merged, placed into, or identified with Christ in his death. This is a believer position in Christ. Very simply, saints of God, if the believer really died with Christ, death, then he has died to sin and is free from sin and its penalty and punishment. What a glorious gift from God. What a glorious position to receive from God wonderful grace. What happens is this. When a, a person really believes in Christ, then God take that person's faith and count it as the death of Christ. This is God's count. The person as having dead in Christ. God takes this person's faith and baptism as standard or stated rather in this position. And the count that the person has participated in is Christ's death. God count that and consider that person to have died in Christ's death, to be placed in Christ's death to be partaker of Christ's death, to be in union with Christ's death, to be bound with Christ's death. So we get into the nuts and bolts of salvation, which should be taught, which should be uh, more taught, is more powerful than preaching, to be taught. When you teach something like Jesus did, he did more teaching than he did preaching. Because people need to know the word of God, need to get the nuts and bolts of the word. A 30 minute or 40 minute service won't give you what you need. You got to sit under some strong teaching. Then you can receive the word of God. Then you can receive the death, burial, and resurrection. Then the preaching means something to you when you are filled with instruction in the work and the power of justification and sanctification. When a person truly honors God, son, by trusting him, God honors that person by spiritually placing them into the death of Christ. What it is, what is it that caused God to do such, do so much for the believer? Very simply, saints, his love for his son. His, God loved his son so much that he will do anything for anyone who honor his son by believing and trusting him. No, now know this, this point, saints, but if you believe her, if you're a believer, it's counted by God as having been immersed in the death of Christ, then the believer has died to sin, one. Has died to the penalty of sin, two. Has died to the judgment of sin, three. It's free from sin. It's free from the penalty of sin and it's free from judgment of sin. This means a lot of good stuff, saints. This means that the rules and reign of the habits and desires of sin no longer, no longer control you. This means that the rules, if you are saved, sanctified, then baptized and buried with Christ, this means that the rules and reign and the habits and the desires of seeing no longer rule over you. The things I used to do, I don't have a desire for it anymore. The things I used to love, 
to do. It doesn't rain on me anymore. I got power over it because of the new birth in Christ Jesus. I used to love to drink. I used to love to hang out in bars. I used to, I'm a, yeah, I said, you should love, yeah, I used to love it. Love it every Thursday. When I got paid, I was right there at the bar, sitting there, sipping on my drink. And this is real, saints. I drink Scotch, Hennessy, Cavassier, I can name it. Beer, no wine, never like wine. Beer and alcohol, never did drugs. But I love the taste of that drink and that beer. But I can go by the liquor stores. I can go by the bars and it doesn't affect me at all. And at one time, I would stop and give me a quick one before I went to work or when I went out because that lifestyle had not been corrected or checked. My position was still in sin. But when I got saved, I tried to drink. After I got baptized, I tried to drink. And the worst, make I, worst mistake I ever made by even trying. That's before I got the Holy Ghost. I was baptized, but I wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. But when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, then my life changed. The things that I was for, now I'm against. He was in the throne. God made, God didn't make no liquor. God made seeds, man made liquor. God made seed, man made beer. God, tobacco, but man made cigarettes. Everything God did, he said was good, but man changed all. He said, well, God don't mind me smoking because I can smoke marijuana because God made the seed. God made the seed, but he didn't make you, you know, cigarettes or whatever for you to smoke. You chose that. Everything that God made was good, and they changed it to do something else. God never intended for those things to be a, 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 a trap for sin. This means that it, you, it ruled that the rule and reign and habits and desire of sin are no longer controlling over us as believers. Sin ceased to have position or place in our lives. We are free from sin, free from sinful habits, sin controls, sin bondage, sin enslavement, sin rules and reign, and sin guilt. Because every time I did something crazy, I felt guilty. I wasn't saved, but I felt guilty. Because I've done wrong. That spirit of God was still there. I was, but I was warned against it. Still, every time I did it, I feel guilty. I feel guilty. Even when you sin, do things you shouldn't do. Amen. You still feel guilty. Even before you got saved, saints. You can say it all you want about belief. Even before you got saved, guilt will show up in your life. If you lied, guilt will show up. If you meet, mistreated someone, guilt showed up. It shows up because you're God has a part in you. Even though you're not saved, you're still in the image of God. God don't like your position. You still live in him. That's why we had to switch from the position of the world, of the things of the world, and sin. And God put it in the position of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for salvation. I'm about to wind up. I know y'all getting tired of me. But I, I, I'm just getting started with this Romans. I'm going to be teaching on Romans, if the Lord allow. I'm going to keep teaching because people need to know how to get free from sin. Sin is bondage. Your mind, your body might be free, but your mind is in bondage. We're going, this right here, we're going to wind it down. He said, it means that we are no longer live in sin. The position 
a place of sin. We cannot live without sin. Not perfectly, but we are free for, to live in sin. We don't. We no longer choose to live in sin. That's the world position. But this is the believer's position, Christ. He's immersed. He's buried. He's placed into it and identified with Christ. In his death, and having died to sin, the believer never has to be under the rule and reign of sin and its judgment again. Praise God. Freedom, freedom, freedom. He is a partaker of Christ's death, bound and united with Christ in death. Therefore, he is dead to sin and all its effects. However, note a critical point a true believer is a person who really believes. This simply means he repented, confessed, obey, uh, obeys, and is baptized. It is this person whom God credits as having died in Christ. This is a glorious position for true believers. He says in Romans, Six and three. So know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Notice what he said. He said, baptized in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. It, it, that, was used, that was only used in the not the gospel. And he was speaking to the Jews at that point. Now he's speaking to the church. He said, Well, all is God's work. I, I said that was before the law. The grace came into play. That was under the old covenant. The new covenant starts with the book of Acts, the new beginning. That's the gospel truth. No, you're not so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, was baptized into his death, Romans 6 3. Knowing this, that the old man, that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, Romans 6, 6. For by the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For we which were, for we which were, alive all, always delivered unto death of Jesus' sakes, that the life also of Jesus might be manifested in our mortal flesh. Second Corinthians 4.11, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ live in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, Galatians 2.20. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, Galatians 3.27. We have enjoyed this portion uh, of teaching. Get in the book of Romans, study it. Do you have any questions? We can bring you through the, the study, the systematic study of Romans. We can dissect the word, we can go through it, and you will find a great value. Many times we read it at baptism, but we go through it and, and that's it, but never really get in the nuts and bolts of the meaning, how powerful it means to be saved. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We get ready to let you go. We thank God for you coming in, listening on tonight. The word of God is real, saints. We don't have to live in sin. That's not our nature. We've been delivered. We've been sanctified from this world of sin. God loves us. He died for all of us.
Pray for me, Lord. I pray for you. Continue to pray for the sick and shut in. Pray for the dead, the dying. All those that have went into judgment. I think about Laverne Clark and her family grew up in a in church, Smyrna. Brought in the family was there. Are we praying for that family? Does my wife come? If we close up, remember that family. Pray for that family. Pray for the Clark Harrison family. Continue to pray that God's will touch that family. Praise God. Yes, he does. He loves me. As we pray, Father God, we thank you on tonight for the word that you shared with us. Bring clarity to your word. Bring understanding to your word. Let the believers know. Let those not saved tonight know. Jesus is the way. Jesus died. And we must follow as Jesus went through the death and burial of us. We must die. We must be immersed, not sprinkled, but immersed into the, into the water. In the name of Jesus Christ. That we rise walking in the news of life. That we will be separated from the world of sin. Lord, God, touch tonight as we pray over the sick, the shut in everywhere, the dead, the dying. God, pray over this nation. President Biden and Dr. Joe Biden, his wife, and pray over Kamala Harris and Vice President, her husband. And Lord, God, I come against any obstacles that stand in the way of righteousness. I pray for our Supreme Court that they will not be biased toward people, but they'll be fair in their judgment. Use the law of God. We don't have a rule of man. But what about the rule of God? We always talk about the rule of law, but what about the rule of God? Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife or his property. What about the Ten Commandments? What about the rules of God? We have cast the rules out of God. We believe in the, the Second Amendment and we believe in bearing arms. We bear and protect our home. Yes, Lord. But we're throwing out the protector, Jesus Christ the Lord, the righteous. The rule of law, but the rule of God. Do we still believe in the rule of God? Or do we just hold on to the rule of men? Father God, come and straighten this old world out. Bring it back to God. Bring us back to holiness, righteousness. In the last days, the lamb will lay down with the lions. Me will take and turn the war instrument to Farm equipment. Oh God, we pray for this world that we may come together and stop devouring one another. Church devouring one another. Our whole world is out of order. Pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, saints of God. We love you. And God bless you and continue. Keep the faith. Amen.